In the beginning, there was nothing, followed by everything, swirling, burning, specks of creation that circled life, giving suns. God doom created the light. Then there was earth. The firmament cooled, and he raised up a land, this holy land, the world, and upon it, he set his kingdoms. In the kingdom of Utopolis, a small ragtag band are investigating seismic activity in the area, but instead have found the remains of a strange vessel that is not from this world. They plan to dig it out for further study. Doom Guard, today. Many will try, but one will be chosen to wield the hammer of gods. He has been chosen. But before he can begin his lessons, he, along with his brothers and sisters, must honor their god of doom. The young one is told that his order is to police the kingdoms of their god. The order has jurisdiction over all. One baron has fallen out of the grace of their god, and they are now tasked to bring him in for trial. The new wielder of the hammer now travels with the elder one to the kingdom of Bar Sinister, who is ruled by its baron. Entering the throne room, the elder, with conviction, orders Baron Sinister to stand trial for his crime of discord. But the Sinister is unmoved and plays it coy. He asks if he even has the right guy. But they came with orders from the Maker, and Baron Sinister reluctantly hands himself over. Doomstud, where a world-eating sentinel stands guard over Castle Doom, where the High Court convenes, and where God Doom himself sits in judgment on his throne, Idrisil, the World Tree. Baron Sinister, finding a way to be released with a clean slate, and in accordance with the laws of Doom, challenges a fellow Baron to trial by combat. Jamie Braddock stands ready, but it is not he who Sinister wants, but instead, the younger brother Brian has been chosen. The battle commences and Brian takes the first strike to decapitate the Sinister One. Brian believes himself the victor, but any battle against Baron Sinister is not so easily won. Sinister's body rolls up and knocks Brian to the ground. He reclaims his head and strikes a death blow to Brian, but suddenly, his weapon is neutralized by their maker. Doom orders everyone to their knees. King Doom cares not for the bickering of Barons, but instead, he brings news of heretics, rebels, non-believers residing in Baron Braddock's kingdom of Higher Avalon. Once brought forth and tortured for information, these rebels manage only one name, Braddock. King Doom demands to know the location of the hidden citadel that houses these heretics from Brian. But the young Braddock doesn't know, in which case, Doom finds Brian guilty for the sins of the people of Higher Avalon. But the truth comes out, Jamie Braddock has claimed knowledge of the rebels and pleads for mercy for his brother. Jamie is taken away for his crimes against their maker, and Brian is elected as the new Baron succeeding his brother. Moments later, while conversing with Sheriff Strange, Valeria brings forth newfound information about a crashed site. The material on the ship does not match anything that they have available, but is still in the realm of possibility. Her interest is put to an end by the Sheriff, who states that this is schism. Sheriff Strange orders Valeria's researchers to abandon the site. It is now quarantined. Elsewhere, on top of the wall known as the Shield, Jamie Braddock is sentenced, but before his sentencing is passed, the Elder Thor presents him with armor and weapon. He takes on his sentencing with honor and leaps forth. His sentencing awaits. 250 feet later, Jamie finds himself in the Dead Lands. His battle for survival begins as a venom creature stands ready to consume his flesh. But Jamie is a warrior and he will not go down so easily. But how will he fare against an army of abomination? Or the seasonal migration of the drone army that is the Annihilation Wave? Both of which pales in comparison to the damned Ultron AI, self-replicating super-evolving automatons that systematically try to break containment every generation. Hours later, young Thor and the Elder reports back to Sheriff Strange. The deed is done and Jamie Braddock is sentenced. But their task is not done yet. They now head off to secure and quarantine the crash site. Arriving on location, the Thors watch as a researcher stands in amazement. He falls to his curiosity and lays hands on the vessel. A loud gush of wind erupts from the ship and the hull is opened. The Thors rush towards the researcher, but a spear launches out of the hull and straight into the Elder's abdomen. He yells at the young one to return to the sheriff and inform him that they have found death. The Elder readies his hammer as lightning pours out of it. 
but he is not fast enough as more objects are thrown into his flesh. Who is it that dares defy the Maker's justice? It is the Cabal, and they have arrived at a very strange place. Thanos grabs a researcher and demands to know where they are. He demands for a name. Trembling in front of the Mad Titan, the researcher states, This place? The Highborn calls it Latverion. Believers calls it God's Kingdom. But everyone else, we common folk, we call it something else. We call it... What's going on guys? Welcome to Comic Island. My name is Joey and today we are reviewing and recapping Secret Wars Issue 2. Wow, there's so much going on in this issue. Right off the bat, I notice familiar faces when we are introduced to this young Thor and the Elder. The art mixed with these Thors made me think it was King Thor and Young Thor from Jason Aaron's run with Thor God of Thunder. But nope, this order of Thors appear to be a police force for Battleworld. And then we are introduced to a few places that, for newer readers, might be a bit confusing. So I'm going to try my best to go over these places. Now before I get into that, Battleworld is an amalgamation of many different timelines and popular story arcs. First, we got Utopolis. I had originally thought that it was a play on the Utopia Island where the X-Men called home. Or it could be from Earth 900 where Xavier's dream of mutant and human coexistence came true. But it's actually the home domain of the Squadron Supreme's evil predecessors, the Squadron Sinister which are basically villainous analogs of DC's Justice League and Hyperion is their leader. We are now introduced to the Kingdom of Bar Sinister, which is inspired from the Mutant Massacre storyline that Sinister triggered. And we also got the Kingdom of Higher Avalon, whose new ruler is Brian Braddock. Or you guys may know him as Captain Britain. Jamie is his older brother, who in the Earth 616 universe is actually crazy and the last time I saw him, I believe he died in the pages of the Uncanny X-Force. Oh by the way, Jamie Braddock is sentenced to death by exile to be the Deadlands. I do hope he comes back to shake things up, but the one thing I did notice was his story arc seems very much like Sylvester Stallone's Judge Dredd movie from back in 1995. He came from a position of prestige, bad stuff happens and he is labeled a criminal and is exiled from his home to a desolate wasteland to spend his last days. Jamie Lannister is Judge Dredd! Wait, uh, <laughs> I mean Jamie Braddock. <laughs> we will get into my comparison of Game of Thrones a bit later. So back to Utopolis and Bar Sinister. Hyperion and Sinister wants to go to war with the Braddock family and the Sheriff is in charge to resolve it. But interestingly enough, Doom doesn't really care but rather, he is more concerned about the rebels that reside in Manhattan, a small piece of land that is right beneath Higher Avalon. Take a look at this picture, looks like Earth 616 and the Ultimate Earth will share this piece of land. Atalan, where the Inhumans reside, is a small speck and we also got a place called Monstrous Metropolis. We are led to believe that only a handful of survivors escaped the incursion, so could the other heroes survive and is living in the Kingdom of Manhattan? Okay, so there's just so much to talk about, so I'm gonna go over a few things before we talk about the reveal at the end. We also get the wall that separates the Deadlands from the Kingdom. This is very reminiscent of one of my favorite TV shows, Game of Thrones. There are tons of similarities such as the different kingdoms or factions plotting and scheming for power and the favor of the man who sits the iron chair. But in this case, uh, the wooden chair? <laughs> we got tons and tons of cameos in there such as the Venom symbiote, Galactus as a guard dog, Madeline Pryor, the Hulk from the future known as Maestro, Sebastian Shaw and even Selene is there. Ok finally let's discuss the Cabal. I was super excited to see the heroes emerge but what an excellent twist. I don't know how they stole the plan to the vessel but the Cabal is alive. I can only assume that Reed Richards and the rest of the heroes will be arriving shortly. I was concerned that we won't get to see any familiar faces because, well, everyone pretty much died in issue 1. But if the Cabal survived, maybe some of the other favorite heroes survived as well? I really hope the rest of the Fantastic Four survived because I was super sad when Reed lost his family. But the arrival of the Cabal would only mean that a showdown between two alpha dogs are on the horizon, Thanos vs Doctor Doom. I would pay to see that. Alrighty guys, so what do you think about Secret Wars Issue 2? And were there any other cameos that you recognize and I forgot to list? Please let me know in the comments below. Me and Arden plan on covering a few of the tie-ins, so I hope you are excited for that. I also have created a page on comicisland.org for the reading order list of Secret Wars, so you can get your comic book fix on there. Thank you so much for watching and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and Arden will be covering Secret Wars Issue 3, so I'll see you guys in Secret Wars Issue 4.